In this unit, we're going to be studying the movement of electrons. Electrons can either be lost or they can be gained. Terms for those are reduction, gain of electrons, oxidation, which is loss of electrons. And a little easy way of remembering that, there's a lot of them out there, mnemonic devices. Leo the lion says ger, with Leo meaning loss of electrons is oxidation, and ger meaning gain of electrons, which is reduction. Now, when you, ha when you see electrons in reactions, that means they're actually just going to be a half reaction. It's exactly as it sounds. It's half of a reaction. And you, can, you can't have electrons in a reaction and call it a net reaction. It would only be a partial. Another couple of definitions that uh, sometimes cause confusion are the are reducing agents versus oxidizing agents. Now, when you are being reduced, that means you are gaining electrons. Well, if you are gaining electrons, that means you are taking them from someone else, which means you are actually causing oxidation, which means you are an oxidizing agent. Okay? So oxidizing agents get reduced, reducing agents get oxidized. Now let's look at a couple of examples. So for oxidation, we'll first have to start with typically anything that's going to lose electrons and metals, pure metals will always lose electrons. So oxidation to show a loss of electrons will be some element or ion getting more positive resulting in a loss of electrons. Electrons are on the right hand side, they're a product side, that means you are dealing with oxidation. Another way of being able to see it is looking at the charges of the species involved. Iron, any pure element, has a charge of zero. Well, I, in this case, I'm going from zero to plus two. Well, that's re that is what we call an oxidation number, those charges. It's basically just that. It is a charge um, resulting when two elements come near each other and whichever one has a higher electronegativity will gain electrons. Along with lower, will lose. So, in this case, we've got an oxidation number of zero going to plus two. It means you're getting more positive. Therefore, you must be losing electrons. Keeping in mind the charge of electron is negative. Opposite of that, would be reduction. So we could start with a, a, a pure nonmetal, okay, so chlorine. Chlorine has a charge of zero, it's a pure element. When it gains electrons, it turns into chloride ions. So here we're going from a charge of zero to minus one, which means it's a gain. However, you notice that there are two chlorine here, which means there must be two chloride there which means there must be a total gain of two electrons. And to be a gain of electrons, you'd be on the reactant side. Now, as far as the trends go, what I'm referring to there is certain entities are always going to be oxidizing agents, certain will always be reducing agents. For oxidizing agents, if you are a metal ion, like iron 2 for instance, any positive metal ion can gain electrons, therefore be an oxidizing agent. Opposite of that would be any pure non-metal, like chlorine gas. For our reducing agents, Pure metals such as iron. Pure metals will always, always, always be reducing agents. You're not going to see any exceptions there. And then non-metal ions like chloride would be a reducing agent. There are also a few entities that are on both sides of the table which means they can act as either a 
oxidizing or reducing agents just to be careful with these ones you see them pretty regularly water iron 2 chromium 2 and tin 2 those four entities are on both sides of your redox table which we'll discuss in a second here Okay, there are others that can be there, but those are the ones that are on both sides of your table. So, the redox table, I'm trying to zoom in on the copy of it here. So with your redox table, it's on page seven of your data book list. It's a whole bunch of half reactions. They just, they have electrons in them, so they're not a net reaction, they're just a half partial reaction. So on the left-hand side of this table, these are all oxidizing agents. So these are OAs over on this side. On the right-hand side, we will have RAs, reducing agents. Okay, notice the The double arrow means this, the, either these half rea any of these half reactions can be written and read both directions. Some more organization ideas as you go up the left hand side, you become a stronger oxidizing agent, and as you go down the right hand side, you become a stronger reducing agent. So the strongest oxidizing agent on this table is fluorine gas. The strongest reducing agent, if we go down a little bit here is lithium metal. Okay, and we'll see more on this a bit later. Uh, just keep in mind, left-hand side are OAs, and the right-hand side are RAs.